time. The older of days, eyes are unfailing, hearts are aligning, dead bones are rising, his spirit is moving. Dreams are rising. His spirit is moving. He's breaking our addictions. And breaking religion. Yes. His spirit is moving. His spirit is freedom. His spirit is moving. His spirit is moving. His spirit is As the thistles and the thorns fall away, 
so we may produce good fruit. For the harvest is here. The Lord has said it. And he has done it. You have said it, God. It is to see you moving. you moving. Oh, how beautiful it is to see. Your spirit on every heart, you sent forth your word, and it come to pass. What a father and mothers could only foretaste is now in our lifetimes the order of day. Hearts are unfailing, hearts are aligning, let bones are rising, his spirit is moving, eyes are unfailing, thank you for your spirit moving, hearts are aligning, thank you for your spirit moving, dead dreams are rising, thank you for your spirit moving, his spirit is moving, He's breaking addictions yes. and breaking religion. Yes. His spirit is moving. His spirit is freedom. Eyes are aligning. Dead bones are rising. His spirit is moving. His spirit is freedom. Breaking religion, his spirit is freedom, his spirit is moving. Your spirit on every heart. 
You've sent forth your word And it's come to pass What our fathers and mothers Could only foretaste Is now in our lifetime The order of day Just receive just receive, amen, amen. You can just receive, amen, amen. You can just receive, amen, amen. Just receive, amen, amen. Just receive, amen, amen. You can just receive, amen, amen. You can just receive, amen, amen. You are rebuilding the ruined walls. You are reclaiming your design. You descend as fire to purify. You are reclaiming your words. You prune. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we bless you for this teaching. Father, you are lifted up. You are totally and completely lifted up. You are the Lord who will take over this time. You are the Lord who is always over everything. The Lord who is always oh, Rabbi Shatakata. The Lord we have to thank. The Lord we cannot stay without saying hallelujah. The Lord to whom we cannot stay without saying hosanna. The one to whom we cannot stay without saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Thank you for manifesting yourself. Thank you for presenting yourself already before we start to teach. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your anointing, your power, and your rabble, shaka, your love. Thank you, Jesus, for whatever you have done, whatever you are doing, whatever you shall do. In the name of Jesus, thank you. <laughs> Father, I confess any sin, and I repent if I came in front of you with any sin. I ask for your grace, Father, in this time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So today the teaching is entitled, When God Comes. Why? Because he's going to talk to us a little bit about how it happened that God came and met Moses and the tribe of Israel and Aaron at Mount Sinai. And we're going to see some elements, some components of God's presence and how do they walk. Amen. Let's go first in Exodus chapter 19. The Bible says this from verse 16 to verse 19. Exodus 19, 16 to 19. The Bible says this. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone is camp, everyone in the camp trembled. The most led, Moses led the people out of the camp to, the, to meet the God, to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended it. Oh. Because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke bellowed, the, the smoke bellowed up from it like smoke from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled violently as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. As the sound of the, of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him. Hallelujah. So here we see that there's some elements that we have, that we see that are accompanying, coming as God descends, as God comes. So the first element will be the mountain. The second element we see is the thunder. The other one is the lightning. The next element is the thick cloud. The next element is the very light trumpet blast. So the trumpet sound, trumpet blast, very loud. And the other one is the smoke and the fire. The smoke and the fire. Hallelujah. So we're just gonna go straight into those both 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 elements and see what they represent, and why are they in the Bible, in the specific text? Hallelujah. So the first one we say is the mountain. Amen. When we go in the Bible, in Matthew 6, verse 6, the Bible says, 
But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Amen. So Jesus is giving us this advice saying, go in the room, pray in the room. Let no people really see you. Do not be a spectacle for somebody. You're not obliged to pray in public, but go in the room. Talk to your father in the room and the father who is unseen who sees you there will reward you. And Jesus, what what we see then in Matthew 14, verse 20, is that Jesus is applying the same thing as the, in the best of the man. Listen to Matthew 14, verse 23. It says, after he had dismissed them, all of them, all his disciples, he was still alone. He went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And we know that he was praying to his father. So Jesus is applying the exact same thing he told us to apply. But he's going into his room. Amen. But the place where he's going every time is the mountain. So Jesus' room was the mountain. Mm -hmm. Why is the mountain the room? Or is the mountain the room? Yes, it is. How do we know that? Is that the room is a place where you are by yourself and you close the door. You are set apart to speak to your father. Now, Jesus uses the mountain in the same way. So the mountain is Jesus' room. Hallelujah. So the first component of God's presence is my room with him. I repeat this. The first component of God's presence in my life is my room with God. Amen. Because the Bible said, go into your room. The Bible never said, go into God's room. It said, your room. And your father who is in heaven will be in that room with you. So the first component of God's presence is my room with God. Amen. My room with God represents my intimacy, my private place, my secret place with God. The place, the place where I spend the most time talking to my father. So everything starts in my room with God. Or well, even better, listen, everything starts in God's room inside me. God's room in me. Ah. That's when I will ask you, and I'm going to ask myself too, what room does God have in you? If everything starts with God's room in you or your room with God, what, good, what room does God have with you? Does he have enough room with you? Are you or are we giving him enough room for him to be able to express himself? That's a question that we must ask ourselves. Amen. Another point, thunder and lightning. When I looked at that, I said, God, what is thunder and lightning? Because you've been like, thunder and lightning. My presence comes, boop, 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 thunder and lightning. And I'm like, God, oh, how come? You're God, how come? Listen to this. Psalm 19 and Psalm 30. Psalm 19 verse 30 and Psalm 97 verse 4. Both says this, Psalm 19, verse 130, the Bible says, the entrance of your word gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. And if we put Psalm 97, verse 4, after it says, his lightning or your lightning lights up the world, the earth sees his sees and tremble. If I mix both, listen to the sentence, the entrance of your word brings light and gives understanding. Your lightning lights up the world, the the earth sees and trembles. Amen. So another component of God's presence is his lightning. But what I like is that they say here that the entrance of the word brings light. And that, that light, that light, lightning from the light make people see and tremble. So the lightning is actually very deeply connected to the word of God. So another element of the presence of God is the word that causes the lightnings. Hallelujah. 
and the lightnings are what cause people to tremble as they see. Arabasata. So something that is really important is the word of God that causes the lightnings of God. Let's dive into it a little bit. First Samuel 2, chapter, chapter, say first Samuel 2, chapter, verse 10, sorry. First Samuel 2, verse 10, the Bible says, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to empty, to, to, shall be broken to pieces. Against them, you will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the earth of the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. So the thunder of God comes to judge. Lord, the Lord uses his thunder to judge. Mm -hmm. So the thunder of God comes to judge the ends of the earth and to give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. So the thunder of God comes as a judgment material. It comes to represent God's judgment, God's decision making. So this is confirmed after that when we read in Revelation 10, verse 4 to 7. The Bible says this, when the seven thunders had spoken, I was about to put it in writing, but I heard the voice from heaven saying, Seal up what the seven standards have said and do not write it down. Mm -mm. Wow. And the angel I had seen standing on the sea and, of, and on the land lifted up his high with right hand and to heaven. And he swore by, by him who lives in heaven forever and ever who created heaven and everything in it the earth and everything in it and the sea and everything in it there will be no more delay as the angel who said it he swore but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he's about to sound his trumpet the mystery of God will be fulfilled just as he proclaimed to his servants, the prophets. So after judgment was pronounced, it was sealed. Listen, after the thunder were pronounced, they were sealed. After the voice, the thunder spoke, what they said was sealed. And it was so sworn in into heaven, unto heaven. When you see that, don't you see that it's like a court? It's like a court because it's only in a court where the decision is sealed by the hammer of the judge. Then, or before it's being sworn onto. The reason why it wasn't written by John is as follows. It was recorded in heaven. This judgment is God's judgment that was recorded in heaven. That's why it wasn't written by John. That's why the Lord said, do not write it. I have recorded it myself. My thunder has spoken. My judgment has spoken. I have recorded it myself. Yes. So the lightning causes the thunder. Mm. So the word of God causes the earth to tremble. Why? Because the word of God in God's presence is a powerful weapon that has the power to judge. The lightning has the power to judge, so to create the thunder. Amen. Out of God's presence, in other words, without the other components of God's presence that we are talking about, that we'll be continuing to talk about later on right now, the word of God is not efficient. Amen. So the word of God does not have power out of God's presence. Amen. 
You will tell me which craft people use the same word of God. Okay, no problem. But they're not in God's presence. So the, the, the efficiency of it is not the same one. Hallelujah. The next element to God's presence is the thick cloud. And as all of us, I was thinking, that's the glory of God. That's the glory of God. When I read correctly the verse, I understood something. Do not make me understand something. I was amazed. Exodus 19, verse 16, the Bible says, with a thick cloud over the mountain. The Bible never said with a thick cloud, that is the glory of God. The Bible says, with a thick cloud over the mountain. So the role of the thick cloud is to be over the mountain, over the room, over the intimacy, over the private place, over the private room with God, over the secret place and secret room that you share with God. That's the role of the thick cloud, is to be over it. So it is to cover the mountain. Mm -mm. It comes like a hat, like a helmet on the mountain. It comes to protect, to cover. It comes like a cover for uninvited people not to see what is happening at the top of the mountain. Yes. It comes like, like a cover for uninvited people not to see what is happening in the room of God, the room in which you are with God. Your room is protected and covered by a thick cloud. Your room with God or God's room in you is protected by a thick cloud when you're faithful to God. If not, you're exposed. Hallelujah. If not, there's no thick cloud. Without faithfulness, there's not. Exodus 40, verse 34, the Bible says this, it is written, then the cloud covered the tent of meeting. We're talking about the tent of meeting of, of Moses. That was a little bit out of the camp of Israel. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Meaning that the thick cloud carries the glory, but it's not the glory. So the, curve, the, the cloud covered the tent and the glory filled the tabernacle. Doesn't mean that the cloud was the glory. It doesn't, it never, it's not written that the cloud is the glory. You're gonna tell me, where did you take your relation from? But listen, meaning that the cloud carries the glory, but it's not the glory of God for sure. It's not the glory of God. The ensemble of the different components in the presence of God forms the glory of God. The thick cloud comes to preserve, to activate, and to protect the glory of God. But it's not that only the, the glory of God is the ensemble of all the components in the presence of God. In order for it to stay where it is supposed to be, The thick cloud comes to make sure that the glory will not go until God says go. The thick cloud comes to make sure that you are not exposed to the eyes, the outside and uninvited people in your room with God. The thick cloud comes to make sure that you are not seen by uninvited people, uninvited spirit, uninvited demons. The thick cloud comes to make sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be. That's why the Israelites could not go up the mountain. They could not see God's glory. Or even they could see God's glory, but they were not allowed to leave God's glory. Yes. They could see God's glory, but were not allowed to leave God's glory at that moment. They were not. They could see that the lightning, the, all that was there, but they were not allowed to be inside that glory. No, they were not. That presence was not for them. No, not yet. They were not ready for that. 
And you're going to tell me what's the difference between seeing and leaving the glory of God. Let's read a little verse. Moses in chapter, in Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. He says, then Moses said, now show me your glory. In other words, Moses was saying, I want to see your glory. Show me your glory. I want to see your glory. I can't go without seeing your glory. I need to see your glory. And the answer of God is amazing. He says, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Now I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And this is what amazed me. Moses comes and says, Lord, I want to see your glory. God says, I'll give you my goodness, my mercy, my compassion. So seeing God's glory includes living in, good, in his goodness, hearing God's voice, or being God's, or being God's voice for other people or for something he wants to say, but in our, in our own presence, not in God's presence. Because he says this, he says, and I'll proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. Living God's mercy, living his own compassion. That's what seeing the glory of God is. And I was amazed. I was like, God. So it means that everybody sees your glory every day, basically. A lot of people see your glory. But a few number of people leave his glory or live in his glory. Hallelujah. That's two different dimensions. Father, Father, allow us to live in your glory and not only to see your glory. But we want to live in your glory. We want to be able to be in that light, lightning, thunderous noises that are there up there where you take people through. Then you take them to the top of the mountain saying, now I want to speak to you. And I want you to bring an iron with you after that. Because what you receive must be perpetrated. Father, we want to live in your glory, not to see only, only your glory. Seeing is great, but living in your glory is better. Hallelujah. The other element that is cited in, in, in Exodus chapter 19, verse 16 to 19, is this. A very loud trumpet blast. And I saw that made me direct to think of the last days. When we hear the trumpet, and what will happen? And when we go in First Thessalonians, I think it's just the Lord pushing me to that. First Thessalonians four sixteen, the Bible says, "For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven, yes, with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Hallelujah." So that very loud trumpet blast comes as and represents an awakening, a revival, represents the announcement of the life of God, the announcement of the awakening, the revival of God to his people. That's what it represents. So after we, we were in that room, we, we, we died in the word of God. We received the power of the thunder. We were able to speak a judgment in God's name. God was able to speak a judgment through us. Amen. After we started to live in his glory, after we started to be protected in that room, now we can hear the sound of revival. The sound of revival. The presence of God is full of revival. When you get to God's presence, you get out revived. Yes, you get out of there with a new life, a new revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. In the presence of God, there is light. There is an awakening and a revival breath into everybody and everything and every domain of our human be being and spiritual lives. I repeat, in God's presence, there is life. There is awakening. There is a revival breath. Like a breath, you get that into everybody, everything, and every domain of our human and spiritual lives. 
Hallelujah. Oh. That trumpet blast comes as a revival. The sound of a revival. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. The sound of a revival. That's the sound of a great revival being announced. In God's presence, there is, there is revival. You're looking for revival everywhere. Have you, have you, go, have you went in God's presence? You're saying, God, I want the revival. Wait, did you go into his presence? Did you go into the presence of God? Revival is not coming from anywhere else but the intimacy, the presence of God. Where he's able to protect you and provide you with the best advice, the best way to do it. Before saying, God, I want a revival in my church. Say, God, I want a revival in my spiritual life. When God comes, there is revival. And you know that when God comes, for, if it, for, for a revival to be, there needs to be a room. My God, Baba. If there's no room, there's no space for all that to be kept in place. If there's no Mount Sinai, there's no place for the lightnings, for the thunders, for the smoke, for the fire, for the thick cloud to express themselves. There's no place for God to put all of them together and say, take it. I am coming to give you something. New. There's no place. Create the room. Hallelujah. And I'm like, and, and, and God says, why is this so loud? Why are the trumpets blast supposed to be loud and not quiet? Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 12, the Bible says this. Then the entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, with all their heart and soul. And whoever will not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, will be put to death. Mayakata. Whether young or old, man or woman. So listen to this. They took an oath to the Lord with a loud voice. With shouting, trump, with shouting trumpets and ram's horns. And all Judah rejoiced over the oath, the oath. For they had sworn in with, they had sworn in with all their heart. They had sought him earnestly. And he was found by them. So, the Lord gave them rest on every side. Listen to this. The loudness of these sounds represent the joy of the Lord. But most of it, but more, if moreover, it represents the seal of a content that protect of a covenant that protects the people of Judah from death. Listen to what it's, it's written here. It says, whoever do not seek the Lord, the God of Israel will be put to death, whether young or old, man or woman. So when they heard that, verse 14, they took an oath to the Lord with a loud voice, with shouting trumpets and grams horns. Wow. So that loud shout represents the, the God saving somebody. God saving them from death. God releasing his life. That's what it, rep it represents. Represent the seal of a covenant that protects the people of Judah from death. Hallelujah. That's what it represents. Amen, amen. In God's presence, there is life and safety from death. When you feel like something is wrong, when you feel like your spiritual life is going down, when you feel like you're dying in the spirit or physically speaking, something is wrong. God's presence is where you go. You go to the hospital, glory to God, but stay in God's presence. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's presence, when God comes, there is safety and there is life. Stay in God's presence. Amen. Glory to God. Come on. Glory to you, Jesus. The last element, last component of his glory, smoke and fire. When I saw that, I was like, God, come on, what's that? He said first, smoke is the result from fire burning something. There is no smoke without fire. And there is no big smoke without the fire being burning something. The book of Leviticus takes us through different types of offerings and sacrifices. If you read the 10 first chapters of Leviticus, you see that there are different types of offerings. Burnt offerings, grain offerings, money offerings, animal offerings, bird offerings, every type of offerings in there. Go and read it. You'll find it. It's really interesting. But in Leviticus 2, verse 14 to 16, and the Lord took me to this revelation today, and I was surprised. Verse 14 says, if you bring a grain offering, a grain, J-G-R-A-I-N, offering of first fruit to the Lord, of a crushed head of a new grain roasted in fire, listen, roasted in fire, put oil and incense on it. It is a grain offering. Amen. The priest shall burn the memorial portion of the crushed grain of and the oil together with the incense as a food offering presented to the Lord. And I know somebody will tell me grain is not the same thing as seed. But the definition of grain is the seed. It's a seed of something. Yes. In agriculture, the definition of grain is a seed of something. Amen. So here when they talk about grain, they refer to Matthew 17, verse 20. When the Lord told me, I was like, God, wow. He replied, and, and that Matthew 17, verse 20. He says, he replied, because you, have so, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as a small mustard seed or small mustard grain, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And I was like, God, why are you speaking about coming with a grain offering and speaking about coming with a mustard seed? Amen. And he explained to me this. He said, as we worship God through a burnt offering, we also worship God through a seed of faith that is being burned in front of the, on the altar of prayer, of worship. Listen, faith is a component of God's presence that comes as a sweet perfume in his presence and allow us and allow our fire to grow and send the sweet incense and smoke to God. I'm going to repeat this. Faith is a component of God's presence. That come to be burned as a, as a good sacrifice, as a grain offering, a burnt offering, and come as a sweet perfume in his presence. Your faith is a perfume, a worship to God, if you didn't know. Your faith is a worship, a perfume to God, a grain offering to God, a mustard seed that is being offered to God and burned with oil. Is Your faith is like that. It's a perfume to God when it's in the presence of God. When you apply it in his presence, it's a good perfume. When it's a good faith, it's a good perfume. When it's the type of faith that God does not like, a faith that is just selfish, it's a bad perfume. Yeah. And that faith, that perfume in his presence allows, allows our fire to grow. Listen, when you're in God's presence, the more faith you have, the more you can pray. If you're discouraged and you don't have faith anymore, it's difficult to pray. When you have faith, you can pray more. Pressing, pressing. And the more you press in, the more the fire inside you is growing. 
Hallelujah. And that fire sent a sweet smoke, a sweet incense to God. Amen. Glory. So we're going to finish by saying this. When God comes, his presence manifests. Amen. His presence is a cross match of things that we provide. Things that we provide him, like faith, worship, obedience, purity, cleanliness. Why I say that? And we're going to explain that later. And his presence is a cross match of things that we provide, like faith, worship, obedience, purity, and cleanliness, and things that he, only him can provide. The thick cloud, the protection, thunders, lightnings, his word, and everything that we talked about earlier. Why do we say that? Because if you read the, the, the book of Exodus chapter 19, you see that the God, Lord, the Lord say, told, told Israel, told Moses to tell them, wash their clothes. Do not come to me dirty. Wash their clothes. Be cleaned. Because you cannot come even at the bottom of my mountain dirty. Is disrespecting and dishonoring my mountain if you do that. Washing means repenting. Washing is the image of repentance by through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Because the Bible says that he washed us and he made us as white as, white as snow with his blood. Through his blood. Amen. So we must understand that we must come clean to God, give him what is good. What we must provide him is cleanliness, purity, obedience, worship, faith. And he will provide all the great spiritual stuff that we need. Because he said, blessed us with, with all the spiritual gift. All spiritual blessings. I'm sorry, not spiritual gift. All spiritual blessings. And actually spiritual gift, you can give it to us too. But he blessed us with all spiritual gift. All spiritual blessings. Ah, sorry. In order to benefit and to be fully in God's presence, we need to cross match both. And understand that it's not only the fact that God comes that provoke his presence to be mighty, but it's the fact that we are clean. We are pure too. Because God's presence can come, but if you're not pure, you will not be able to, to receive it. Uh, the fact of being pure is a little bit too much saying. Like holiness is not purity, simply. Holiness is the fact, is accepting that you're dirty and you need to be clean. Amen. And doing everything to be clean in God's presence. Amen. So Father, we just pray that we need your presence. In this ministry, we need your presence. We need your presence, Father. That's all we need. Your presence. Your presence, Father. Your presence, Lord, Lord, that's all we need. That's all we need. We need your presence, Father. Father, we can't do with your presence. We can't do with your presence. Father, we can't do with your presence. We can't do with your presence. What we can't do with your presence. Your presence is what we need to with it. Allow us to have your presence. Allow us to have your presence. Allow us to have your presence, Father. And allow us. Allow us to have your presence. Allow us to have your presence. Allow us to be part of this prison. Allow us to be part of your presence. Shalabarasa. Your presence. Allow us to be part of your presence, Father. Allow us to be part of the presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love. When my heart becomes free, and my shame is undone. Your presence, Your presence Lord. allow us to be part of it. Oh, 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 o
we can't stand without your presence. Allow us to stay, to be always in your presence. We need your presence, Lord. We need your presence, Lord. Father, we need your presence. All those elements, we need, we need the thunder, the lightning, the smoke, the fire. We need the room, Father. We need the judgment of your glory. We need the presence. We need your protection. We need it, Lord. Oh, shalabara, shalabara. We need it, Lord. We need it, Lord. Holy be your presence. We need your presence, Father. There is nothing we need more. Nothing we want more. That we, we desire more to be with your presence. Allow this ministry to have your presence. Allow us to have your presence. Allow us to have your presence. Allow us to see your presence. To live your presence. Allow us to be like Moses, be admitted at Mount Allow us not to have to stay only at the bottom, but allow us to go up slowly and step by step if needed. Oh, yeah, 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 come to me. we need your presence. That is what we need. We need your presence, Lord. We need your presence, Lord. We need your presence, Lord. We need your presence. Here we are. With humble hearts. Here we are. Something we need. What should we do? Okay. Naleba, 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 naleba. let us pray for this ministry. Please, your presence. Give us your presence. Let us speak your glory. Let us see your glory. Lord, we need it. We need it. We need it. We need you, Jesus. 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 Let us become, let us become, for a world of your presence, let us set the glory of your goodness, let us become, for a world of your presence, let us become, let us become, let us become, let us Father, we want to be aware. We want to see. We need your glory. We need your glory. Not in the waters. But in your glory. In your glory. In your glory. In your glory. Father, let your glory take up. Let the lepra start. We want to see. In your glory. We need to have a feet. Not only to have our feet. Not only to have a way. We need your glory. Give me in your presence. 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 We want to sit in your presence. We want to sit in your presence. We want to sit in your presence. Allow us to sit in your presence. Allow us to sit in your presence. your presence better. Oh, Thank you for you did not invite and invite that people in the intimacy with you.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let's do it again. Just speak. Let your truth be so clear. Oh, merci. Oh, merci, le Dieu tout puissant. 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 Merci, toi, le Dieu tout puissant. Oh, Seigneur, il n'y a rien qui n'est pas invité dans ta présence, dans notre, dans notre chambre, que soit invité. Il n'y a rien qui n'a été invité rentre dans cette chambre. Le rien qui n'a été invité de rentrer dans cette chambre. Le rien qui n'a été invité de rentrer dans cette chambre au nom de Jésus. Le rien qui a été désinvité de rentrer dans cette chambre. Mais quelque chose est quelque part qui a été désinvité. Mais que cette chose ne rentre pas. Que cette chose ne rentre pas. Ne t'attire ni les autres amis de Dieu. Et nous, tu veux dire que 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 tu veux Only the presence of the Lord. We leave your presence, your presence. Rabba, 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 I know your glory is here, but I need your tea cloud. Are there any uninvited people out in the name of Jesus? Any uninvited people out in the name of Jesus? Any uninvited people out in the name of Jesus? Any uninvited people out in the name of Jesus? Any uninvited people out in the name of Jesus? Any uninvited people out in the name of Jesus? Any uninvited people out in the mighty name of Jesus? Any uninvited people out in the mighty name of Jesus? Under your presence. Your presence, your presence, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what heart longs for, to be overcome. By your presence, Lord. And invited people, release your fire against them. Burn them in the name of Jesus. Let all the elements of your presence destroy them as they try, as they try, to, as they try to come in and be invited. And, uh, let them be destroyed. All of them in this ministry, in my life, everywhere, let them be destroyed. Fire, 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 fire. Fire, fire, fire. fire. Let your glory your glory, your presence, destroy all of them, destroy all of them. They cannot survive because they don't have a room. They cannot survive because they are not a room. They cannot survive because they did not make room for you. Let them not enter my room. Let them not enter my room. If you did not decide for them to be invited, I'll break the powers and I'll break the chains. I'll break the links with every uninvited people who are trying to be invited in my room with God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you are not invited, I'll break your cycle i break your chains you cannot come in in the name of jesus now everything that is inside go out in jesus name go out in jesus name go out in jesus name i'll break the cycle and the powers of those uninvited people of those uninvited animals those uninvited entities those uninvited principalities those uninvited powers fire against you let the presence of god and all its elements destroy you crush you crush you crush you crush you Fire in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. And I, I plead your blood upon all the rooms, 
upon all the rooms of anybody you are, you are descending on. Any element that you send and any element you present is covered with the blood. Your presence is a cross match between all what we give you and what you, what you have and what you descend with. Hallelujah. And I'll cover this with the blood of Jesus. I declare your grace upon this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for Kanku is here, Mama Kanku. Thank you for Mama Kanku. Bless her, Father. Bless her life. Bless her night. Bless everything she's doing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Many, many men. I know you came late, but just to recap, we talked about yeah. God's presence. We yeah. talked about God's presence, the different elements of God's presence and how God used those elements in order to establish some things. So if you want, you can ask for the recording and we send it to you. All right. May God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Bye. Amen. <laughs> Bye-bye.